Hello and welcome back to the lecture on applied econometrics. So we have been talking about probability distribution. We also learned double structure of variable. Now in this lecture we are going to talk about how the probability distribution is going to be different between a continuous variable and a discrete random variable. Okay? So when, whenever you are talking about a variable here it means a random variable. Now what do we mean by probability distribution? We have been you know giving lots of examples of probability distribution, but what do we mean by probability distribution? So, by probability distribution, we have to remember few things. One is that whenever I am talking about in terms of probability, whenever I am talking in terms of uncertainty, whenever I am talking in, you know, in terms of the future events or whenever I am talking about things which I have not done yet, so then I actually talk about a random variable. By now, we are clear about that. right? So, we are talking about a random variable. Now, the random variable, it has different values. right? A random variable has different values. The events will have different values. When you, do, when you do a random experiment. So, the all the different values along with their probabilities for a random variable, all the different values of the random variable along with their probabilities constitute a probability distribution. Okay? So, for example, uh, you know you can talk about the coin tossing. So, you have you know head, 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 if you if you you know toss two coins, it is head, 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 tail, tail, head and tail, tail. So, they have their all these different outcomes and with their corresponding probabilities that will give us the probability distribution. Now, probability distribution quite obviously we have seen the uh, types of uh, random variable and now we know that there are two types of random variable discrete and continuous. So, for these two types of random variable we have two different types of probability distribution. So, one is that for discrete random variable. So, for discrete random variable we are going to see how the probability distribution is going to be or what are the characteristics that it has to have. So, one thing we said that the example of coin tossing is uh, is an example of probability distribution and if basically if I actually get the probabilities and the corresponding values or the different outcomes of the random variable. So, that actually will constitute the probability distribution for this particular uh, random variable. Now, when I actually try to sort of think about the properties that this rand, uh, that will have for the pro, you know that will have for the probability distribution of a discrete random variable. So, we can always write down few things that first thing it has to be a random variable, it has to be a random variable because that is the first and foremost condition. Then of course, in every event it goes you know without saying the probability of x has to be non zero you, you can uh, has to be sorry uh, has to be uh, more than more than you know it it could be zero or more than zero it can never be it can never be less than zero right probability value is always greater than or equal to zero right now if i now try to represent if i try to represent the discrete random variable in terms of the let me write down here in terms of the its probability so i'll get probability of x is equal to x. So, that means my random variable x is assuming a particular value x we remember when we used capital X and a small x. So, when a capital X is assuming a particular value small x, so we can write it down as let us say a functional form with a functional form okay, is equal to let us say x is equal to x. right? So, the function could be like the functions function we explained when you talk about the female labor force participation or the function you know it could simply be how we calculate the probability for the coin tossing okay, or die throwing. So, anything could be a function. So, if that is the case and if we can explain the probability in terms of you know this, uh, uh, this functional form, we can always write down that summation of summation of either probability x is equal to x or you can also write down which is easy nothing but summation of function of x x is equal to x that is going to be always 1 because we know that the sum total of all the probability values are going to give me a 1 right now that's about the discrete random variable the, the probability distribution of a discrete random variable we're just going to come back to that with an example uh, but before that let me actually talk about the probability distribution for continuous distribution uh, continuous random variable probability distribution for continuous random 
variable. Okay. Now, when I talk about the probability distribution for continuous random variable, so things are pretty similar with the probability distribution for a discrete random variable except in one aspect. And let me first write down the things which are similar. So, basically it is also for a random variable, it has to be a random variable, and already I am specifying that random variable. Second point about this is that the probability values has to be greater than or equal to 0. Actually, I should not write this. I will explain why I am writing only x and not x is equal to x here. Now, the third part there is some difference and that we have to understand where, you know why the difference is coming and you know uh, uh, and how the you know the, the properties of a uh, discrete random variable is different from the continuous random variable and how that is actually impacting the probability distribution. Now, we have already seen this that the major the, the main aspect where a discrete random variable and continuous random variable are different are, is that the fact that in discrete in, in case of continuous random variable you cannot really get a probability value for a space probability for a specific value of the continuous random variable and the, the reason is that you remember the example you have given let us say we are talking about a temperature right. The temperature could be like if I talk about the temperature of Kharagpur it could be between 20 to 40 degrees Celsius, but if let us say today's temperature I say it is 30 and you can say you can always see that it could be a little higher, it could be a little lower, it could be have infinite number of values between 30 to 31 or 29 to 30. So, the thing is that you can never have a specific probability value for a particular value of the x. Okay? You can never have a probability for a particular value, value of a x, it is always going to be 0, but the reason is there are infinite number of x's. Right? So, the probability is going to be extremely, extremely small. So, if, if I ask you what is the probability that today's temperature in Kharagpur is 29.000001 degree Celsius, it is really you know it is, it is basically 0, you cannot you can't, you know, assign a probability. Now, that is because of that reason we always take the probability in terms of interval. So, we always take uh, the probability value for an interval of the value of the random variable. So, we do not say like we said here, we do not say probability x is equal to x, but rather we say the value in an interval okay? and the, that is how we write it, it is like always probability of say we write, let me write down here probability of let us say a to b. Okay? So, the probability of x uh, in the range of a to b and that we can represent in a functional form and that is always since we are talking about an interval we always integrate right we, we sort of integrate that we sort of integrate that okay uh, so that is the major difference and if we sort of now if we know that this is how we represent the probability value for a uh, you know continuous random variable so what we can do is we can actually integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity and if we integrate uh, this f x d x. So, that is always going to give me a value of 1 because you are taking the values from minus infinity to plus infinity okay? and that is where you are actually you know if you do that. So, all sum total of the probability is going to give you a value of 1 so that you know and so that is the only difference that we have between uh, these two uh, kind of vari random variables and remember that we are mostly going to use the continuous random variable in our you know most of the works. And also another concept that we are just going to see in a while is that you know, we will we are going to talk about the probability density when we talk about the continuous random variable, it is no longer just the probability and we need to keep in mind how the probability density is different from probability and we will we'll just explain that. So, with that we will uh, sort of end this lecture and in the next lecture we are going to see couple of examples of uh, you know probability um, sort of probability uh, distribution for continuous random variable and probability distribution for a discrete random variable. Thank you.